this. Small bowel obstruction, the most common cause is going to be adhesions, adhesions, adhesions. Yep. So a patient who's had surgery before, um, coming in with what looks like a, a small bowel obstruction, it's because of their adhesions. Mm -hmm. um, the second most common cause is going to be an incarcerated inguinal hernia. So number one and number two, adhesions or an incarcerated inguinal hernia. They're going to present with um, belly pain. It's going to be colicky. It's going to be cramping. It comes and goes. Um, they typically have vomiting. If the obstruction is sort of a proximal process, it's going to be bilious emesis. If it's a distal process, it's going to be feculent or stool-like. <laughs> um, delicious. <laughs> it's magically delicious. And um, they will endorse um, no um, flatus. And so... I do not endorse you know, your flatus. <laughs> do you endorse this flatus? So air fluid levels, air fluid levels, air fluid levels, air fluid levels. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of dilated uh, bowel. Throughout. And a dilated lot of bowel, dilated, yeah. yes, loops of bowel there. Um, classic for a it's small bowel flatus. obstruction. <laughs> on exam, um, they're going to be um, distended. This is your most reliable sign on your physical exam. Um, their belly is tympanic on exams. So that's where you tap it, and it sounds like it's hollow. Thanks, um, <laughs> Focally um, tender or diffusely tender, so that's not going to be particularly helpful. Early on, they're going to have um, high-pitched and very active bowel sounds, Later on, they're diminished bowel sounds. So it just so depends it on that. when they get yeah. And then, uh, and then uh, you know what? Too uh, late. Too late. <laughs> Save me. <laughs> oh. What are you going to see on x-ray? You're going to get the dilated loops of bowel, the air fluid levels we saw. The string of um, air pockets is called a string of bead sign. So it looks like a, a string of air mm -hmm. pockets all lined up on top of each other. You'll see no... Um, air distally, so the rectum is usually empty of air, um, unless it's an early or a partial SBO, in which case there may still be air, um, air down below. 5% um, <laughs> of SBO patients will have a normal x-ray. So that's annoying, because yep. we really rely on that. And so Dear God, here you man, have you it. Your flatus. <laughs> Lots of gas everywhere, and air fluid levels, and dilated loops, and I always find this to be like, I would put that on my wall. <laughs> Small bowel obstructions are like really artistic when you look at them up close. They really are. I want to put one on my wall and no one's going to know except for doctors you, will come you in and be made like, a good um, radiologist. Um, <laughs> and look at that. It's like a night sky. You know, it's man's struggle with. Uh, it's like a it's, Rorschach drawing. That's right. My struggle for meaning. Oh, and then this is what it'll look like on a CT scan. And so you get these dilated loops of bowel and then these air fluid levels. Um, on your scan, nice. what kind of looks like a hydro as process. well. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> How do we uh, manage these? These guys have to stay. We keep them NPO. We give them fluids. Um, get your surgeons involved. Um, it's usually non-operative, but they like to kind of keep an eye on the patient. Mm -hmm. um, you do not need to drop an NG tube in every single SBO or every single ileus. Um, sometimes the surgeons, some of our surgeons get super gung-ho about the NG tube. They don't all need it. But if there's a lot of vomiting, if there's a lot of distension, by all means, you know, decompress some of that um, air uh, proximally. And then closed loop obstructions, any evidence of necrosis um, on on the um, scan or perforation on the scan or volvulus needs to go to the um, OR immediately. 